if I can see the... By the way, I turned on recording. Okay. Um, um, I don't remember, but I, 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 I was seeing, I was looking that and I found out some strange characters at the end of some uh, phrases or words. Uh, maybe it got to be with the coding, but I don't know how to help. Uh, um, and uh, the the other thing that the, that I was trying to say uh, to say to you is that uh, as your robot is more lightweight than mine, maybe for testing you don't have you you can only tape it uh, your steering wheel. My son. Well, back to the strange characters you're talking about. Could could you show me an example of that? Are you on a yes. computer where you can pull it up? Yes. L let me. Uh, I was trying to find out the link that you post of the. You. Uh, uh, it, it's I in the random remember. channel of both the old Slack and oh, the new Slack. The random channel. Yes, I was looking in the. Sh uh, the okay, yes, wait. Um, this one. Oh, I can share my. Uh, can let me share the my screen. He's talking I, to you, I Al. cannot share my screen now. Do you have to make him co-host or something? Or you have to allow him to share? Oh, oh I didn't realize well, um, that was locked down. Hold on. How do I? Uh, anybody want to offer? Uh, how do you? I don't know. Uh, but I can show you. I can put a screen cap in the. Let me like this. Wait a second. Um, I'm looking at security. I don't mm. see anything about screen sharing. Oh, that's, that's, that's I'm going to send something in the chat that might help. I'm clicking multiple participants can share simultaneously. <coughs> Is Do you see the, there's a toggle switch on the upper uh, right hand side of that screen sharing pop up? Oh, okay. It should be enabled now. Juan, try. You did it, Al. What I have is. Um... Oh. Yes, okay. That's right. Uh... Wait, this uh, Yes. Wait, this. Can you see my computer? Yes. This one. Huh. I, I don't I don't know what those are. Th that's the stuff that was originally copied from Zoom, and I didn't see that on my computer, so I don't, I don't know where it's coming from. But since that's just extra text in there anyway, it's not really. It shouldn't be a problem. Yes, I I, I didn't. Uh, I I found out that because I I I found out that this is a. a, a an extremely important job that you have done, um, but I didn't understand which was the problem. Uh, my computer sometimes it's got to be with the encoding, if it, it is UTF-8 or that kind of things, because we use accents and all that uh, all that thing. Uh, but I was uh, I was willing to to comment you that. Yeah, that, that section called chat is just, I just simply copied that from the the YouTube video page and stuck it in here. That's the description from the YouTube okay. video page is how those ended up there. And they're not correct anyway, because I can only copy the text. And I see the text has weird characters in it. So, but anyway, 
that that's just for extra reference that possibly when you do a search maybe maybe what you're searching for would show up in there and if you want to use one of those links you have to actually go to the youtube page to make that work yes 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 that's so it looks that's like nothing okay. i type then... nothing i typed in seems to be wrong from what i've seen so far yes um uh, the most important thing is that the youtube links uh, do, don't have the problem it's uh, only the, the 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 links that are in the chat. Yeah, and, and the links in the chat are all cut off anyway because I can only copy the text from the YouTube page, and I, I may go back and fix that someday. But I can only get back to like the middle of 2018, I think, is because I'm going to have to copy it from the backup that Matt made of the Slack channel when he was deleting stuff, and Doug put it out on the uh, the wiki somewhere. So I could go through one at a time and paste in the actual, the actual links, but that's, that's another 100, 100, 150 hours ahead of where I'm at right now. So I may not get to that. Yes, uh, and one thing that uh, uh, that uh, that I, I I was playing all the weekend with the <laughs> after you teach us to use the <laughs> the math plot. Uh, and I find it very useful, uh, but I, I, what I was thinking because this um, this week I got to I uh, some guy that is here in Argentina. It's like a kid. It it's got uh, seventeen years, eighteen years. He, he began working with me in the tractor, uh, and I got to go through the the complete installation in a computer about the 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 rows and the docker image and that kind of things and i was thinking that in the how how we are going to handle those image the the ross agriculture image uh, because uh, for example as we are using the dubens uh, the dubens and the pip is not installed in the original so, uh, Docker image. Yeah, so I have a PR in, I mean, I put Matt as the reviewer. I don't know if he is available to review, but Juan, would you like to review it? I can add Yes, you but I don't, I don't, uh, I'm, uh, I'm learning how to do that. Because I, <laughs> I noticed, yeah, I noticed that uh, Al's instructions said, oh yeah, just copy this into a new workspace and, you know, it's it's easier than that. It's you put it in the correct folder, and you can just you know when you when you cat can build, it'll actually build with everything else. Yes, but, but uh, yes, but when you you still have to install the 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 pip and and some software pip and dubens. Okay, so I installed Path Publisher and Path Follower. So. Uh, I don't know about the Dubins and the the other one, so we can install that too. Well, the Dubins okay. is required for Path Generator, I believe. Okay, so you, I don't have Path you, Generator on there. You possibly already had it loaded or whatever, so. Yeah, yeah. This was just over, I guess, Saturday when when uh, I was helping Al debug, so I noticed that those weren't there. So. You put it in the just to be clear, Benny. You put it in the Docker container? Uh, I have a PR in, right? It has to be accepted. And cool. then we'll build the Docker container. And this is the move base flex Docker container, not. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. OK, thank you. So uh, can you send me uh, the, the the thing that you need to, to get approved? Yeah. Yes, and the the other uh, I I'm not quite sure about this, but I I think that the other piece of software that uh, uh, was missing was a Nano, the the editor. So the... I suggest that we don't put uh, superfluous tools on the container itself, and if you need it, then you can install it yourself. But I don't feel like it belongs in the container, like. I was a little conflicted. I was a little against installing VNC, et cetera, in the container because, I mean, the container should be, in my opinion, the container should be like as lightweight as possible. 
Uh, yes, I understand that. The, I'm having the same discussion in Russian Spanish, and I have a very similar discussion or different point of view with Matt about it, because it's like maybe it's too much lower in the bar uh, the this, but Nano and Pip and uh, I think Dubens are like kind of tools that are uh, important uh, because you will always use um, a code editor like that. You have also visual code on that, but uh, you need something to work that it, it is not beam in the command line. Okay, so we can uh, we can install uh, Nano. Nano is fine, but I just don't want that to become super. And what was that second tool you were saying? Um, a peep. The okay, Python package. Does it not? I think that it doesn't have peep, uh, okay. but maybe I'm wrong. Can you file uh, it as an issue, please, and then I'll take care of it. Okay, okay. So I file it uh, as an issue, but can you show me where you need to uh, me to uh, to put it as an issue? Just put uh, the link only. Okay, yeah. Any Dubins is uh, is a um, in one of those Python scripts. It's actually required for one of those Python scripts to run. Okay, is it is it uh, you know just a raw Python file that you guys are doing, or is it a uh, is it something that comes from PyPy? Uh, by, let's see. No, like no, you pip install Python. Dubins, or do you? The, do the you just... No, no, it's pip, pip install. That's okay. why we need pip. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we we can take care of that. But the pull request I have, and here's here's that. Um. That's just installing publisher and follower. So, but for generator, we need Dubins. I, I, I understand fully. Okay. I mean, there's nothing preventing me. I can merge it in, but I mean, the, the good practice is that you assign someone as a reviewer and they. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I jump up when uh, when Chef was talking. I don't know if Chef the, uh, got something more to to say. Oh, sure. Just to say. No. Juan, you had the okay. floor and anything else you wanted to share? Yes. The other thing that uh, I got my tractor to the mechanic. Uh, I was able to to begin working with this guy, uh, and uh, I am thinking uh, in in build up the and, and, and work this week in the electronic uh, as I'm got uh, as I'm having the tractor at the at the mechanics. So uh, I will try to post it in the Slack channel if someone wants to to meet. Uh, to shine when I'm working, I think it will be on Saturday. Cool. Uh, I I made the Zoom uh, conference. I think it can be started anytime if I remember right. So if if it's helpful, uh, you should be able to just click on the link. And I tried one to set you as. A secondary, secondary administrator on this. Administrator on this. And I'm getting okay. an echo. And I'm getting an echo. Um, so you, you should be able to start it as well. Uh, for my side, just a couple things quickly. Juan, did you have anything else? You're good? Uh, share screen. So, uh, I mean, as Benny mentioned briefly, it might be the world record on um, threads. So he, he was 
hugely helpful in getting me. Um, is there a way to expand the thread there? How do you do that? Maybe can you pull that over? Yeah, that's that's probably as best as best, yeah. best you can do. But yeah, I encourage using threads when possible in, in Slack because then you know it's very easy to see this is a topic, this is a topic, this is a topic. So I try to promote that whenever possible. Although after spending hundreds of hours going back through this stuff, uh, well, I, I guess it specifically goes with the fact that when the, uh, the old Slack got archived, all of the threads were lost. So if you go look at the stuff under the wiki, it'll say, here's the topic, topic, topic. It says there's 54, 54 uh, items in this thread, but they're not there. So if, if this ever gets archived, you try to do anything with it, nothing in the threads will show up. So it's just one more one more thing to consider. And I, I notice I don't get notified when people update threads. So if you put something in thread, I probably won't see it. So just a couple of couple of thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that might be a limitation of the Slack. I guess do you plug into the Slack API when you when you uh, do these archives? Uh well, the, the, the things that were archived, Matt did that somehow, and it, it, he said he was the owner, and he could say archive it, and it put it out into a bunch of JSON files, and then Doug ran some kind of software that converted that, and I, so I have no idea how it was done. I just know when to go look at it, all that got lost. Yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure that was a software-based limitation. I'm sure it's surmountable. The thread, well, the thread issue, the notification issue, yeah, that's... I mean, I guess that's good and bad, right? People don't get notified about conversations they don't care about. But on the other hand, even if you do care, you don't get notified. So I get it. I just want to interject that since people said, yes, we should do it this way. I just want everybody to think about, you know, the implications and, and possibly six months down the road, think, oh, shit, now nothing works because, because we did it this way. But anyway, I, I just thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, so for me, the, the the threads are useful. I'm also, you know, I think writing instructions is helpful. So, <laughs> you know, learnings from the threads, I think, should make their way into some sort of instructions that people can use. Uh, that's just my thinking. Um, but anyway, so the thought process was, Jeff had previously said, hey, look at command velocity and see if you can track you know that that value the problem statement was you know how do we control the speed using some of these uh, scripts that we had you know we're, we're trying to make use um, and up until you know the last week we really weren't sure of where speed was being controlled um, so the investigation went, uh, Linear X was running at, you know, these values, I put a bag file out there, then he helped ID um, this particular value that sat in this YAML file. He said, it's simple, just change that YAML file. I was a little bit confused about how to do that in the Docker container. And so I'm like, oh, I have a way around that. I'll just do a dynamic change of the parameter. Um, and... And that's when I discovered that path follower or path generator, no, 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 I'm sorry, path publisher as written didn't work for my for me. It was depending on something that I wasn't doing, depending on some topic that I wasn't publishing. So I got rid of reference to that. I'm sorry, say that again, Benny, because I didn't understand that. Yeah, so the original file for Path Publisher, the original raw Python file that was in your instructions, yeah. depending on some sort of topic that I didn't know where that was coming from, and it wasn't on the container. So uh, I removed I removed reference to that topic, and it seems superfluous. 
Yeah, you you said you changed something to Path Publisher, mm -hmm. and um, and then yeah, I put the put the full pull request. So in, in in the end, you didn't change anything in Path Publisher. I did. I did. You can see the message right below it. I said, oh, sorry. I, yes, I changed something. Um, and then if you go into navigation, lawn tractor underscore navigation. Yeah. And then source. Is it scripts or source? Uh, and then path publisher. So that's that's I removed reference to some there was some topic that I was looking for and I just removed that. Back out one level from there. And click on the, the name where it says added added Droder's path. Click on that instead and it'll show you what the changes are. Yeah, right, assuming go I right. no, go go back, go back down to the line where you clicked originally. Here? Don't click. Don't click it. Go over to the right where it says "Added Droder's Path Follower." Click on that. Yeah, I'm not certain if I published the original. And that shows that shows what was added and deleted. What he changed. So anything in red says he deleted. It, anything in green says it was added. Right, but I'm not certain that the original was committed. Before I before I did that, so I don't think you'll be able to see the delta. Yeah, see everything shows as well, green. For my it. point is, you can click on that and see what people have changed on it instead of just looking at the raw file and, and trying to guess. Yeah. But in this case, I took it from another source, so it'll just show up all as green. Um. But yeah. Uh, so if you if you go to that gist right there, if you go to that URL on line four, you can see the original path publisher. Yeah, see he there is a Rossby subscriber on line 18, the got path that I'm not certain where that comes from. So I deleted that reference to that. So that's what you took out. Yeah. And basically any reference to, so I took out the path callback uh, line, that function that's defined on line 11, et cetera. You took out that whole, mm -hmm. that whole uh, callback. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, back and if you don't like that, and we can add it back in if if you know where that got path is coming from. But no, I, I don't. I, um, I was just curious what you had changed. Yeah. So yeah. nothing, nothing of really about the functionality. Just it was it was look, going into that callback, and I didn't know what. Like I couldn't get it to operate because I didn't know what the purpose of that subscriber was. Yeah, the other thing of note from the debugging process that uh, Vinny helped me with was I was thinking, hey, since I wasn't familiar with how to change the Docker YAML file and have it, uh, ultimately I got that to work, but um, the ROS parameter I mean, that command, although the command took, you know, and I could echo that out and see that it worked, the, the planner didn't, wasn't ingesting the, the data. So um, you had to actually get the value to be set at runtime. And the only way to do that was go into the um, Docker container and change it. So that was one of the things that uh, 
with Vinny's help, thank you again. We, uh, we worked our way through. So to control the speed at a high level, that's one way to do it is to set that, set that parameter. Um, the other way is ultimately, I guess, to change this code and, and uh, you know, add some more logic to the code to change the file or change the speed more dynamically on a line by line basis. But at least we have a rudimentary way to change it at a high level which is cool. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to just share uh, quickly, Jeff, last time we were talking about, um, well, I'll just start from here as a reminder. So if you go back up here to general, we have some of the links here that are hopefully uh, useful. One of, the, one of those is the Google Drive folder. Um, the video conference chats and the video conference recordings will be in there. I took a short video of my steering motor and put out there and I'll just play that for a second. Just wanted to make a short video to show how my motor is connected to the steering control. I know. Can you hear that sound? Yes. Yes. You're up at the steering wheel, but I thought it might at least sense of the brackets that I've installed. So I, I won't play the whole thing, but Jeff, that's out there if you want to look at it. And I just wanted to show um, the, the motor isn't uh, fixed. It balances. I mean, this is the steering shaft that comes up. So ultimately, that would have been the you know, the steering wheel would have been way up there and it just pivots on that bolt and then rests on that U-bolt. And- um, Yeah, the difference, uh, when I bought my steering wheel, I got the the first one, I got the U, the U, what, how you call this bracket? the. Uh, the thing connecting to the steering uh, steering wheel, the motor with the steering wheel. How do you call it, Al? A U universal, universal joint. Yes. Yeah, you, universal uh, joint. Got, That's probably more accurate. Yes, I got my universal uh, joint, but in the other ones that I bought, I didn't get it. That is much easier when you get the universal one there. Well, again, and it's just my, I mean, this is the, I was on the right side. I've moved the video to the other side. I mean, this is just the, so the steering wheel would have been up here. I mean, that's just the whole, the whole thing. So you can see again that it's pivoting. The motor is pivoting on that, that bolt. But that video is out on that folder. If you want to look at it, it was just, I just wanted you to have another again, view of, I don't know, I just shared that for the heck of it. Al. Okay. Uh, next time, can you record a video on how do you work uh, if you got the, your tractor, uh, how do you work with your tractor? Uh, tell me more. I mean, I can tell me more. What are you, what are, what are you? Yes. I, I want, I want, uh, I want to see how do you uh, how do you work uh, how is your environment and how you work with your tractor because uh, I'm trying to get mine better and I think that I have to pull up my tractor over the the floor so I can work with the tractor better 
and I'm trying to see things uh, or tools that I can use for that. Yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, sure, I mean, I can try. I'm, uh, the, uh, I mean, the startup procedures, just so you know. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I understand the standard, uh, the startup uh, procedure because, but, but one thing that I want to do is to try to be, begin testing scripts that I have tested in the in the simulator in a in a more clear way in the tractor, and the the best way I think is to pull over the tractor from the floor so the wheels are not touching the floor, and I can uh, so the tractor is not moving, and I can test the scripts to forward, backward, the turning, that kind of things. I'm I'm not. Uh, sure if I'm being able to explain myself. No, I understand. I mean, I haven't, um, at this stage, I'm confident enough in my steering control and my motion control that I haven't done any testing where it's been immobile or on jacks. What we, you know, I, I, I test live in the yard at this stage. Um, so my, my testing is more about, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to test navigation at this stage as opposed to basic control. Okay. I, I feel like I've got basic, you know, steer left, steer right, go forward, go back under, under control. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, in, in the, in the, uh, so control of the energy <laughs> in the industrial world, we talk about, you know, for safety reasons, you want to control the energy. Um, I feel like I have control of the energy. Um, then now I, what I need is control of the navigation. Um, okay. Okay, I don't feel that I have control of the energy, too. so I'm thinking in, in get and get better ways. Um, first of all, to build better bridge between the simulator and the tractor, uh, from the testing in the simulator and the testing in the tractor. So I think those are a couple of the things that I I uh, wanted to share. The next the next step for me is I. Uh, that steering angle sensor for me, I needed to weatherproof that. And so that's um, my next step was to try to weatherproof that steering angle sensor because it's exposed to the rain and the elements. It's certainly not hardened. It was just hanging out there. <laughs> so that's my next step is to weatherproof that so I can get outside and not be worried about it starting to rain. You're, you're talking about the potentiometer? Um, it, it, it acts like a potentiometer. It's actually a magnetic um, angle sensor, but yes. Okay. That, um, I mean, I'll pull it back up. Put a plastic bag over it. Yeah, well, because I have those gears moving around um oh speaking of speaking of those gears moving around uh just this is an afterthought you could have put that board right on top of the shaft and glued your magnet right to the end of the shaft on that motor and not have to put those extra gears in there i i just noticed i was watching a video last night where you're talking about that and it occurred to me that you know you could put that sensor right over the top of that shaft on top Cool. Make, make a more 3D printed brackets, but you seem to be pretty good at that. So, <clears throat> say that again because I'm I'm too slow. Um, I could have done okay. what? You're you're gonna pull up a picture. Go ahead and do that. So instead of you've got that orange bracket mounted it to the side, and you got that orange gear and that black gear. 
you could have just, uh, which you can't see here, but if on the end of that shaft at the very top of it, just glued the magnet right to the metal shaft on the top of the motor and just put your board on top of the, the whole thing up there and not put any gears in between. Then I would have had to bring, I would have, this, <clears throat> if you can see my cursor, that, as you no doubt know, that is the magnetic sensor and the magnet is at the end of that. So if I put that magnet on top of that shaft, yes. then I have to put something on top of that to read the rotation. You'd have to flip that little sensor board over and put it above that magnet on top, yes. And so I've got to, then I'd have to put something up there to hold that board. So I'm, what, I mean, it, yeah, I would avoid having these gears, but then I've got something sticking way up there to read that rotation. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is lop this off and do exactly what you're talking about, but do it down here. I, I would leave some, some room on there because eventually you're going to say, boy, I wish I saw that some shaft there. So I, I, I know where that black, black <laughs> that, that's exactly why I haven't done that is because although I feel like I could control the energy, I, sometimes I need manual control of that energy. Yes. I, and, and I, I'm, and from my point of, point of view, uh, something that I, I think that I need to have is something to move the the steering wheel uh, when the without the the tractor uh, being turned off. Uh, yesterday, when I, I when I pull up the tractor to put it on my truck, thanks that this was a young guy that <laughs> was very <laughs> uh, have a lot of force, a polenta, but uh, it was very heavy, and I will deal with that every time. So I, I was just trying to keep from having some, um, you know, I was, I was trying to minimize the, you know, go over here, it's a little bit easier to see if you're on this, uh, Just trying to minimize the profile, if you will. And keep it down as low as possible. Because otherwise I'd have that sensor and some, you know, some bracket up here. Yeah. Yes, I have it that way and it's 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 not good. Juan, may I suggest that if you're, you know, you don't feel like you have energy, you don't, you feel like you don't have control. Is it possible to put your tractor up on like jacks and, you know, so yes, that way you yes, can't yes, really yes. roll away anywhere? Yes, yes. That's, that's what, uh, that was, uh, was I, what I was trying to see, uh, how was, how the others were working. And I think that I will go through, through that, uh, through that approach, I think that I have to use the the ones that that, that they use for motorcycles mm -hmm. uh, that are like a, a square shocks that you move it uh, down and you pull it up. Uh, but uh, I'm, I was trying to find out the better solution for that. Okay. To work the, the most comfortable way uh, because you have to understand that I'm entering winter. And I will have to work with my tractor in my in my cellar. I would just put it up on blocks, put a block in the back and a block in the front. And you, you know, you lift it up, push the block in, lift up the front, push the block in, and then it's up on blocks. So you don't have to go out and buy a new jack yeah. to do that. Yeah, it depends on how heavy yes. if, it's too, if it's too heavy to lift, you can't do that. But yes, yes. The the problem with that is not the backwards of the tractor. Is the front uh, the the front of the tractor because you don't have a, a, a place to, to pull an easy place to pull and to to pull it up you have to like <laughs> you, it's, it's like you're giving a hug to a fat woman so you have to go like this 
and and and, and catch the two wheels and pull uh, and pull them up and but now as I uh, that, uh, as I will have another guy to help me the, those things will be more easy the, but you don't have uh, the, the worries that you don't have an easy chassis in the front part of the tractor the back bar is very easy to work the front the, the front part of the tractor is not so easy and the uh, and I need to have the the the, the steering wheel loosely so I can play with it. On your lawn tractor, can you take that cover off the front? You know, it just got a cover over the engine and all that. Will that will that come off? On mine, I can take that off. I tilt it forward and just move it sideways a little bit. That pops off. Now, if you've got stuff bolted to that cover, you won't be able to do that. But because you know, you look at Al's tractor, yes. he's got the cover off his, and that way it's just easier to grab yeah. on the stuff. Yes, but I committed the the error of putting the GPS on the front part of the tractor there in the where in the cover so uh, i got the problem that i got the antenna there so that's something that i i need to change or put it in the back that maybe will be better for working or put it uh, or put it in another way that i'm I, i'm not seeing but the problem was the gps antenna Another option is mount that to a magnet. You can get those magnets that like are made to stick to a, a metal plate. Now uh, they're you know they're about about this big around, and I, I don't think I have one handy here. Uh, but yes, yes, yes. If, if you bolt on the knee, just stick it stick it on any convenient metal metal spot on your your vehicle. That way you can move it around. And yes, I, I think that the the best approach for the GPS antenna uh, is to put it in the back of the tractor because uh, you are always dri uh, driving forward and the most uh, common thing is to get a, a forward crash, not a backward crash. So if you are putting the antenna in the front, it, it, as I have the experience, you will break your antenna. But if you put in the backward, uh, in the back of the tractor, uh, it's more difficult to have that problem. Uh, back to Al's issue where he's saying he, he might cut his shaft off somewhat someday. Uh, like two years ago, didn't you say you had one of these power steering motors? You already cut the shaft off? Is that, did you do that? Is that still laying around? I do. I think it's down in Texas. You, you think what? It's down in Texas. Your, your, your image is, okay. I'm just thinking if you got one's already cut off, you could swap it out and put that one on there. You wouldn't have to wouldn't have to soften one. And the other thing, back back to my point about not using gears, I, I just just wanted people to, to realize that you know if you've got an easy access to something, like say at the end of that shaft, it, it's it's turning like you want, and that would be a convenient place to put the put the sensor. And I think Juan actually had the uh, the cover that went over that shaft his so he had a place to conveniently put sensors out there at the end which the one i bought just has the bare shaft sticking out like like yours is showing right there but yes you would have to have some way to mount that out there but i just just wanted people to think that you know there are other ways to do stuff so i just just wanted to bring that up yeah it's the manual control when the engine's not running or you know you need to move it five feet or something that's what i i mean i um, I'm, I'm not ready to give up that comfort blanket yet. <laughs> if I'm able to get my motor mounted on mine the way I think I'm going to do it, then I will still have a steering wheel and I'll have the motor in parallel with that. And I, it, since you can just turn the shaft on that motor by hand, I think it won't be that much to overdrive it. So I think I could still dr manually drive mine around you know, without modifying anything. And then if, if it's easy enough, I just move the motor forward, take the chain off, and then I won't have any extra lag on it or drag on it. So uh, when, I, when I get that far, I'll, I'll let you know if that's a uh, good, good or bad way to address this stuff. <clears throat> yeah. yes, but do you have a point? If I can, uh, surely what you are saying is the best because uh, you uh, the best way is to have to the, the the steering wheel by yourself to use it because 
uh, you will have problems. You will always have problems and you need it to, to, to pull the tractor. Yeah. Even if it's just, you know, putting it on a trailer or something or. Vinny, anything on your mind you want to share? No, nothing on my mind. Uh, I think, you know, as I get time, I want to help you guys get things into Git. I think that's one thing that's holding us back, I feel, and, and from my viewpoint, um, and helping bridge the simulation and the, and the real world. Because ideally, it should be the same thing, right? You just use, you just don't launch, uh, you know, stage. But it should be the same things that you're running against stage that you're running on the robot. So if we can get to that um, within the next six months, that'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. I think that uh, you are right. Um, uh, I'm not sure uh, how we can show up the problems uh, in a better way of of bridging. Uh, the the simulator to the real world. I, I'm not sure if I was able to to, to explain myself. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, well. <laughs> yes, I I'm not sure how to show up. Uh, how, which is the best way to show up the problems that we, uh, when we crash, uh, trying to uh, to bring the simulator to the real world. That was why I I was uh, trying with Al to build up uh, the spreadsheet uh, with the different configurators of the uh, configuration of the tractors and the configurations that we have in the simulators. Because as we began working in the simulator and the tractors, we, it's like we branch uh, in multiple ways. So uh, one of these days, let's let's sit down and put it, put in a list of what's missing in the simulator that you guys do, even in terms of scripts that you guys run, et cetera. Because, I mean, yeah, I agree. We're not going to have a hundred percent parity because it, you know Jeff has a different system than Al than you. Uh, but yes, if we can get but close, we get we 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 try to do some kind of work with that. Uh, I think that let me, if, if it's not in the milestone, uh, let me show here. Mm. I put it in the chat. Uh, we have this uh, spreadsheet. I think that it's not the the most accurate. Uh, we can work it much better, but it's like uh, I think that Well, I will share as well. Um, I mean, my uh, try to make this bigger. I mean, Vinny, I'm. It's been a while since I've used it. Probably, well, it's been all winter since I've used it. But the difference for me in real world versus simulator is in the real world. I have a tincter uh, dashboard user interface, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. you know, that helps me get things going. Um, and, you know, part of that is, you know, starting the RPI, starting the joystick, starting the, you know, the GPS. Do you, want, do you want us to port that to um, the simulation environment? 
Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, it would be interesting to take more time and explain to you what's going on behind these things to see in your professional view what could be done or should be done. I'm just, you know, taking a moment to say these are the kinds of things that in the real world I'm happy to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, the main thing that shocked me, I guess, this past week was you had an entirely separate process of getting these three scripts running, whereas they should have been living in your workspace, in your in your Catkin workspace. And we can get there. It's You're a better programmer than me, man. <laughs> Let's just be clear. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's uh, configuration management. It's not uh, it's not programming. Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, okay. That's so. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna try to try to help us get to. You have more technical chops than me. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Too kind. Sorry, uh, I have to uh, to leave. Uh, see you next week. Thanks, Juan. Bye, Juan. Jeff, anything else? Are you good? I don't have anything else at the moment. Benny, are you good? I'm good. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll have save the chat here. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye.